What's going on guys? Just got back to the house here. I wanted to make a short little video. We didn't get to go to the YouTube space and then we didn't really do much in Venice. So I wanted to make a short little talk about my vlog setup. A lot of people are curious about it. A lot of people always ask questions. So I'm hitting you with those answers. My idle hands lead to evil thoughts. That's what I was told. I see a devil trying to creep on up. I'm using the Panasonic GH5 with the Metabone Speed Booster Adapter 0.64 XL with the Tokina 11 through 16 2.8 turns into a 1.8 with the Speed Booster with the Rode VideoMic Pro. Um, sadly, requires a battery, and then have the uh, Fuzz uh, Dead Cat here, which is nice for blocking out the wind most of the time. Um, I honestly am not a huge fan of this mic, but it gets the job done. Uh, I honestly liked my Rode Video Mic Go a lot more because I didn't have to worry about uh, it. Always, it was phantom powered. I didn't have to worry about turning it on. And this one, it supposedly is a little better quality audio, but you have to turn it on. You have to have a battery. And some of the times I'll be recording and filming, and I'll realize. Oh shoot, the mic's not on, the mic's not on. It's kind of a pain in the butt. So when it comes down to the pros and cons of this setup, I kind of just talked a little about the microphone. Uh, but what do I like about, god damn mosquito. What do I like about it and what do I not like about it? I love the Panasonic GH5. It's, uh, I had the Panasonic G7 before and it was, it still is a master camera, master camera. It's still a great camera, and I'd recommend the G7 to anyone starting filmmaking. This is for people you know who have a couple years of experience and want to upgrade and beef up their setup. And you know, you also have to have the computer power to edit this footage. But I love the Panasonic GH5. The frame rate options, the creativity that it lets you explore is uh, super awesome. Uh, you can do 180 FPS in 1080p, you can do 4K 60, and it just looks phenomenal at every frame rate, every codec. The 1080 is the 1080 high frame rate is ridiculously sharp compared to the Panasonic GH4. So if you're considering upgrading from the GH4, that variable frame rate is uh, a lot better. Obviously, everything doesn't come down to image quality, but the built-in time-lapse feature, just like in the G, uh, G7, you have that same feature uh, with the GH5, and it is phenomenal. It's a very convenient feature that I think a lot of people overlook, especially especially if you're on, uh, especially if you're doing a more cinematic style vlog and you want to add time lapses uh, to help transition scenes. Uh, the built-in feature is super nice because you don't have to worry about compiling all the photos in Premiere or whatever your editing software is. And with this lens, I really like uh, the lens I have on this setup. Actually, before I get into the lens, I'm going to talk about the speed booster. The speed booster is the 0.64, and I know I should have the 0.71, but I had the Panasonic G7 before the G. I upgraded and uh, that's why I had the 0.64 speed booster because it took away the 2.3 crop on the G7 and now since the GH5 only has the 2.0 crop it's a little wider but when I have the when I'm all the way out at 11 I get a little vignette and some people comment about it and it is annoying sometimes I miss it and I won't crop in but you can just scale in at that point but it is annoying I would definitely recommend if you are starting fresh and you don't already have a speed booster I would get the 0.71 because uh, you really don't want uh, any any of that vignetting but the speed booster is fantastic it turns this 11 through 16 lens into a 1.8 aperture which is crazy fast for super wide so it's pretty good in low light and the GH5 already is good in low light it is relatively heavy um, it's not super heavy though it's a very compact little tight vlog I mean compact uh, in recent dates. I mean, obviously I know vloggers back in the day had tiny point and shoots. It's a pretty compact, solid setup. It has a great feel to it. You feel like you can just drop it off a building. I've dropped mine off a car and it survived, so I mean, cheers. Like I said in my previous video, uh, one of the downsides to my vlogging setup is with the speed booster, I get all the electronic signals through the lens, but I can't really adjust uh, the autofocus doesn't really work through the speed booster. It's super clicky. Um, depending on the lens you have, it can kind of work, but with this Tokina, it doesn't work super well. So I'm always in manual focus, which sucks, but when you learn to use it and you learn to uh, get better at manually focusing, I think uh, it, you can end up with just about as good of results as autofocus. So that's one of the biggest downsides. You can't really put it in the full automatic mode, but if you're shooting a cinematic type vlog, you don't necessarily always want autofocus. It would be nice to have, and I, I really miss that feature that I have sometimes when I whip out my ARX100, which I definitely at some point am gonna get to talking about what is in my entire camera bag, which a lot of you who have followed me probably have a decent understanding 
of what's in there. I'm gonna get to that probably within the next couple of days, you know, telling like what's in my entire camera bag, what I like about it, uh, what the not so good features are. And that's what I always try to do when I talk about my gear is I don't try to just talk it up, I try to, you know, list some pros, list some cons, try to let you know if it's right for you. And with this, I would say, if you are more of a filmmaker, if you're kind of into the cinematic look, this is definitely the camera for you and uh, definitely recommend the speed booster and everything. But you know, if you're looking for more of an easy just run and gun, I wouldn't necessarily suggest this just because it's kind of a pain in the butt uh, having to adjust everything manually. It produces great images, they're super clean, good in low light. I really love my setup. I'd recommend it to a lot of people, but a lot of people I also wouldn't recommend it to. That's it, this is my vlogging setup. I hope you enjoyed today. Subscribe if you liked it. Share with some of your friends. Catch you guys in the next vlog. Got the thumbnail, baby!